Today, I want to talk a little bit about encryption. Joe here has some rather embarrassing news to tell his wife, but instead of waiting until he gets home, he yells it across the parking lot. Chad, their mutual friend, overhears Joe shouting and goes back to gossip about it with others. That's pretty embarrassing. Next time, Joe calls her over the phone because he didn't want to make the same mistake again. Chad is none the wiser and he's got nothing to gossip about. Privacy achieved. Now, imagine law enforcement thinks Joe is up to no good in his spare time and they've decided to investigate him. What options do they have to intercept private communications and inspect them? Will phone calls travel through wires and airwaves and can be listened in on by anyone with the right equipment? We commonly call this wiretapping and it's been around for a very long time. We've got laws limiting its use to protect our citizens, and it requires a warrant. The problem here is that the same equipment can be used by nefarious individuals to do the same thing. Whether it's a rogue employee at the phone company or a hacker, this is bad. Joe, being smart, decides to encrypt all of his phone calls, including the personal ones, using devices that scramble their voices from end to end. This has two effects. Now law enforcement can no longer collect data, and now nefarious beings can no longer creep in on his personal life. Law enforcement can't do much to deal with this type of encrypted communication because it was the end devices that encrypted and decrypted everything. On the internet, however, communication platforms are rarely encrypted end to end, and instead, a middleman is used to facilitate between individuals. This can be pretty cool because it allows for asynchronous communication around the world. But what's really going on in between? We communicate on the internet by utilizing basically the same infrastructure our phones use, but there's a catch. The server in between holds our data until it's ready to be sent on. While we might like to imagine our private messages on a website like Facebook are encrypted, the truth is, they're really not. And now law enforcement wants access to this potentially very useful data. However, so do the evil people. Let's take a bit of a closer look to how this works. When you securely connect to websites, your encrypted session is shared between you and the server. What we want, as users, is to know that even Facebook can't see the content of private messages and the reason is simple. If a hacker breaks into the server, they gain access to everything anyone has ever said to anyone else, private or not. A number of governments have expressed interest in tapping into all of this private data and have even suggested storing it off-site. The threat to users seems pretty clear. There are now multiple systems where the data lives. However, the government server is a much juicier target because they're pulling in data from everywhere. Before anyone wants to point the finger at the UK, the US, or any other country, this is a worldwide problem. It doesn't matter where you live. If a friend is in a foreign country that demands this level of access, or you connect to a server in another country for any reason whatsoever, whatever encryption is used on one end becomes entirely pointless if attackers can simply gain access from an unencrypted source elsewhere. I find it astonishing that anyone can suggest banning end-to-end -end encryption with a straight face. For those people who work in law enforcement, intelligence agencies, and government roles, this type of legislation affects them more so than anyone else. If a foreign government decides encrypted communications between two people should be banned, does that mean the president of one country should not legally be able to contact the president of another country on an encrypted line? What about two militaries communicating over an encrypted radio? Is that illegal? Certainly not. That would be absurd. I mean, we need to be able to protect ourselves because national security. Of course, this legislation will account for that and will allow law enforcement intelligence agencies and other government roles to maintain their end-to-end -end encryption. This leads us to the concept of privacy only for the powerful. And this is wrong. But you know what? On the upside, if the provisions pass, I look forward to hearing about Parliament's STD problems. 